and an opportunity to express their concerns, which would help you make a sound decision of which person is deemed the most qualified for that particular position. Secondly, this gives each candidate a platform to state their qualifications, to state their intentions, and why you should cast your vote for them on March 3rd. And I will leave you with a quote by John H. Kennedy. Let us not seek the Republican answer or the Democratic answer, but the right answer. Let us not seek to fix the blame or the past. Let us accept our own responsibility for the future. Thank you. Our facilitator for this evening is Dr. Elaine Hopalong Harrison. Let me give you a brief bit of information about Dr. Harrison. She is no stranger to this community of Tuskegee, Macon County. Her NACP association stems back to her birth, as, as, as she declares, NNACP is in my DNA. That is a quote by Dr. Harris. For more than three decades, she has continuously been on active, an active support of the NACP. This includes a former NAACP branch president, a former regional coordinator, a former state conference president, a former member of the NAACP National Board of Directors. She is a current member of the NAACP National Resolutions Committee and current communications chair and executive committee member of the local branch. Please join me in welcoming our facilitator, Dr. Elaine. Hopalong Harris. Thank you very much, Mr. Vice President, and to our President, Mr. Bullock, and to the candidates especially, and citizens who've taken a little time out just to be with us this evening. This is very important, ladies and gentlemen. Very important. The election, as you know, is March 5th, and we have invited the contested candidates here tonight so that you can hear them and maybe make your decision if you have not finally made it. Now very quickly, let's talk about the procedure, the rules of the game. Uh, each candidate will have three minutes. And we have a timer with a bell. <laughs> each candidate will have three minutes to introduce yourself. Who are you? Right? Personal introduction. And then we will go into uh, a period where you will be asked an individual question. Nobody can pick it back on anybody else because you have your own question. You will have two minutes to respond and answer that question. And then we uh, we have some index cards, Mr. Bullock. Yes. If anyone thinks you want to get those cards, if anyone thinks you want to write a question down, we have index cards. We will have questions uh, that you have written, and of course we will screen them and uh, have the candidate answer the question. The candidate will only have one minute to answer that question. That question. And then finally, we will have a closing statement, two minutes, or one minute, by each of the candidates. Are there any questions, candidates, regarding the procedure? Any questions? Uh, audience, if you are writing a question, you don't have to put your name on it if you don't want. But please say to whom the question is written. Is the question directed to all of the candidates? And I will introduce them moment in a moment. Is the question uh, addressed to all of them or to a particular candidate? And you will, will write that person's name on the card. All right? Are there any questions now about the procedure? We have candidates, candidates seated among us this evening. We have, uh, in, to my immediate left, Mr. Iverson Gaddy Jr. Junior, yes. who is running for re-election to the Revenue Commission. Did you please 
please stand so they'll know who you are. <laughs> Seated next to him, we have Mr. Robert Mike Berry. I had to look to see what is his name. His name is not Mike. Mr. Robert Mike Berry, who is a member, current member of the Board of Commission. The Commission. Commission. We have seated next to him. Let's take nobody somebody doesn't know you. We are seated next to Mike Berry, Mrs. Tracy Moon, who is a candidate for the Revenue Commissioner's position. Now, seated next to her him, I've been trying to find you for days. Mr. Oh, Miss. Only thing I know is Mr. How is it Paris? Paris. Mr. Paris Thomas, who is a candidate for District Three Commission. <laughs> um, seated next to him, we have Mr. Ernest Magruder, candidate for District Three Commission. And finally, candidate for the re-election to District 3, Commissioner Drew Thompson. I just received a message that uh, apparently uh, the, the uh, chairman of the commission, Mr. Banks, will not be here, did you say? Big pardon? He had to go out of town. Oh, he had to go out of town, oh, okay. So the, the chairman of the commission will not be here. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome all of the candidates. <laughs> Who has number one? Number one. This is section number one. All right. Number first candidate to come before us with a personal introduction, candidate Tracy Moon. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming out. My name is Tracy Moon. So to adhere to the instructions, I will give you a personal introduction of myself. I was born here in Bacon County. We moved when I was about four to the famous John Andrew Hospital. We moved when I was about four years old. Grew up over in Tallahassee, real town in Tallahassee area, and graduated Tallahassee High School. Moved back here in 90, well, let me, let me revert, uh, go back a little bit further than that. I attended uh, Huntington College where I received my Bachelor's of Arts degree. I then worked with several uh, retail companies. I was a retail manager for Holly Myers Furniture. I ended up coming back to Tuskegee. Uh, I was hired at the university as the loan specialist. Worked there for a short period of time. Then I worked with the Chamber of Commerce. I eventually ended up with the uh, probate judge's office as the uh, senior clerk in the motor vehicle department where I ran that office and I have run that office for about 19 years, 19 plus years. So I've been with the uh, county government for over 19 years. I am married to Richard Moon and uh, for 20 26 years, excuse me, no, 28 years. <laughs> 28 years, we have two children who matriculated through the school system here. Both graduated now, and our youngest is currently, please don't hold this against me, T.U., but she's uh, currently a freshman at Alabama State University, where she is a biology major. That is also my mother, Princess Freeman, next to my husband, All right, who is here with us this evening. Um, and I am the second youngest to seven children. All right. I have, yes. <laughs> so I have worked with the community and the citizens of Macon County now for about 20, about 23 years, about 23 years. So I have come to know, wow, people from all over the county. And it has been a joy to serve all of you. I feel, you know, earlier the mayor was saying uh, customer service, and I do feel that that's one of my strong points. 
I don't mind serving and I serve with joy because I think when you do or realize that you, we're all servants, it's easy to do that. So I do it with joy and on March 3rd, please elect me as your revenue commissioner and uh, let's move Macon County along. Good evening, Macon. everyone. Good evening. I'm, I'm Rick Thompson. I'm your current county commissioner for District 3. And let me just say it's been a pleasure to uh, serve you in that capacity. Uh, she said talk about ourselves. Uh, been here in Macon County all my life. Uh, it's a great county. I enjoy working for the citizens of the county to, to, to improve the county, to make it the best it can be. There's a lot more work to be done. Um, we've come a long way, but I just want to continue to be able to work for the citizens to improve the county, to make it the best it can be. And on March 3rd, I would just appreciate everyone's vote and uh, be able to continue, to continue to work with the county. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. My name is Ernest Magruder. I am a local yokel. I was born here, raised here, and I'm still here. This, this horse I'm going to ride now, I have rode before. I was kind of fishing back in the early 90s. And in that tenure, I did some valuable things for the people of Macon County. I built a recreation center in District 3 on historical ground historical grounds, which is Prairie Farm. That's where everybody went to elementary school in that area. And after securing the, the recreation building, I started on the park, working with the local association of West Macon, who was led by Mrs. Mitchell at that time. She provided the money for the goals and the asphalt. I spoke to a local con contractor, and he came down and paid the basketball court. Meanwhile, we worked on the baseball field. We had lights. This was in the early 90s. We had lights, and we had a field. I also was instrumental in building the jail. The county commissioner at that time appointed me chairman of the committee that they appointed to build the jail so they wouldn't have so much heat on them. Me and that committee secured financing and a contract. And now you see the Lake County Jail. But what I want to do for the citizens of Lake County, I want to Keep on pushing. Everybody know we got a financial problem. We know it. We know it's coming. It's nothing new. We need to sit down, scrutinize our budget. Because we passed the 11, almost $11 million budget, and we had a million dollar deficit. <laughs> so we need to sit down and go through our budget line by line, and things that we know we're not going to do, we need to eliminate them to try to make the budget equal because we need to get our finances together. We don't have any increase in our revenue, no tax increase, nothing. We have to do it ourselves. On March 3rd, Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's an honor and pleasure to be here this afternoon. I would like to thank the NAACP for hosting this event and giving us the opportunity to speak to everyone. Uh, I'm Robert Mike Berry. Uh, I was uh, born in Macon County over on the lake at the old hospital. And uh, I graduated from high school from North Southern High School. And uh, I've been in Macon County ever since. I started public service in 1977. I went into law enforcement. Uh, I started off in North Silver Police Department, and uh, I stayed there, uh, I think it was seven years, I finished the Alabama Police, Police Academy at Faulkner State University. Faulkner State University. I 
I left Notre Southern PD. I went to work for Sheriff Lucius Zamos as a deputy sheriff. I worked with him for seven years. And when he retired from office, I went to work at the Tuskegee Police Department. And I worked there for five years. And then I left there. And, uh, after the first next thing I've done in my life, it was 1988, I ran for commission uh, in District 4. And uh, I've been on the commission all around Macon County since that time in District 4. And uh, after I got elected commissioner in, in District 4, I went to work as chief of police in the town of Franklin. And I worked there as the chief of police and fire chief and built a fire department out of the town of Franklin to serve the people of Franklin. And we really got it going good. And I want to thank everybody for helping us on that. And uh, I've been on the commission, I think, a total of 27 years. And, uh, and I'm running for uh, chairman of the county commission this time. And I appreciate y'all considering me on March 3rd. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. My name is Arkson Gandy, Jr. And I am originally born, I was born in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, but my parents believed that it was more successful for the family to move to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Whereas they said, now that is our home because Tuscaloosa, as many of you know, was an area of civil rights and my father uh, was one of the guards for one of Martin Luther King's lieutenants, Reverend T.Y. Rogers. And so I was personally involved with the civil rights by acclamation of my father. But I have had several tragedies, well, many tragedies since being elected. But first I'd like to introduce my wife, Susan. We have two children, Iverson and Rachel. Uh, Iverson is in D.C. and Rachel is in Birmingham. She works with Congresswoman Sewell. And uh, she just, they just uh, endorsed Biden some weeks ago. But anyway, I, uh, in 1996, I ran for public office my first time. I ran for the revenue commissioner. And I came in second. There were only two in the race. But, uh, I didn't win that time. But I stayed committed to my goal. And I wanted to be revenue commissioner, so I waited until that time came. And since elected, I have had many personal tragedies in my life, and my wife as well. We lost uh, first her brother, then my sister, then my dad, then my mother, then uh, her mother, then my aunt, in all of six years. So, and we have not yet grieved um, responsibly, but we have taken sometimes just to go to the funeral and back to work again. Um, I'm officially re retired from Tuskegee University in my first life, and I've gone back to be a professor, and I have a couple of students here tonight, and I do work there in the daytime, and I spend the other part of my life as a revenue commissioner. And most of the time, I do a lot of my work at night because that's where you get most of the work done. Um, my hobbies are, Cameras, I like cameras. I like to um, talk about cars, and I, I love, I love technology, and that's one of the things I enjoy about the office and being around people who enjoy technology because it is such a marvel to, to do things um, in today's technology rather than in old technology. One of the things uh, I like to add about myself is. Oh, for me. <laughs> Who likes to help young people? Raise your hand if you like to help young people. Who, who seriously likes to help people and isn't all talk? So I want to yield my time to a young lady here. Would you like to, to speak? Well, I'll speak for her because she, she can't speak, so I'll speak for her. She works with the Tears Organization. And she has a group home for young women here in Tuskegee. And it's not far from here, actually. And she needs help, right? I want all of you after this meeting to walk up to her, because she's the director of that organization, and talk to her about how you can help her and help this community, because she is fighting every single day for our children. For me. I'll tell you, I want to hear about you now. 
I'm nobody. I'm nobody. I'm Paris Thomas. I was raised here in Tuskegee on a high school dropout. Okay? I'm nobody. But I care about this community. Because of people like you in this room, I chose to get my GED. It was because of people like you in this room that I chose to enlist in the United States Navy to serve my country. It's because of people like you, the leaders in this room, that I came back after I finished active duty to give back to my community. I'm nothing. All of you are leaders. I want to get out of your way. I want to learn from you all. And I want to impact this community. And we can all do that together. I don't have all the answers, I promise you. I don't know anything. But you all do. The people in this room have solutions. People like Miss Angelie over here have the solutions about what can help us in our community. So if you're serious about getting Macon County where it should be, go talk to that young lady right here in that blue shirt. If you're serious about helping young people, then on March 3rd, vote for Paris Thomas. If you're serious about taking action, then, then let's do it. Let's talk more action. I don't like to talk. I like action. So on March 3rd, vote for Paris Thomas. Now to the next segment of our speak out. Each candidate is being asked an individual question. No candidate is being asked the same question. I'd like to begin with candidate Moon. Candidate Moon. And her question is, with the current operation of the Revenue Commission's roles and procedures, what changes do you propose if elected Revenue Commissioner? What changes do you propose if elected Revenue Commissioner? Speak. First of all, I would like to say that the Revenue Commissioner's Office is very heavily controlled and uh, organized through the state of Alabama, okay? So anything that you want to change outside of county policies and procedures and the regular day-to-day -day operation of that office, you must go through the state of Alabama, through the Revenue Office. Now, am I and do I have the ability and forward to train as they will for whatever that may come, of how they want their office run and the taxes dispersed? Yes, I do. 2010, after 20 years, I did go back to school and gain my master's in human, in, uh, human resources with a 4.0, while working full time, while with my family. Now, my platform, I will bring to you, and I will be a full time available Revenue Commissioner from 8 o'clock or till 4.30 or however late I have to sex to stay. I will unite with all other revenue, uh, excuse me, county elected officials to build healthy relationships throughout the county. I will be a presence in the office to provide leadership and build teamwork with the current staff. But most importantly, I will be there to provide to you the professional services and support that you totally deserve from day to day by answering or being available to handle whatever concerns or issues you may have in a timely manner. That, I do believe, is not being provided today. That is why I am in this race. I am in this race for you, the citizens, to, to service you. So, if you want to get technical as far as changes, there is one thing that I will add in. It is so easy to lose your property. May I finish this thing? Finish the sentence. This sentence. It is so easy to lose your property. So I will, I will, if I have to myself, began picking up the phone call and calling our property owners to have them to come in and pay their taxes if they have forgotten. 
That is a simple thing that I can add in that will go many miles, many miles for us. That's what I would do. All right, the next question is uh, directed to Commissioner Iverson Gandhi Jr. What further initiatives do you plan for implementation if re-elected? Okay, thank you for the question. Very good question. One of the things I like to do is to continue the process of being honest and fair and following all the rules that the state has allowed me to follow. And there are some things that we can do. And I would like to continue to update the process of the appraisal process. You know, by not being in the office, one may not understand the operation. We have one appraiser, and he has to do 19,000 prices, 19,000 parcels in four years. So I would like to, as of right now, he's getting a tablet which will enable him to do more uh, assessment during the year, during the time he visits that property, and it will help him uh, spend less time out on the road and carrying boxes out with him. Also, we would like to add the pictures of each property so that when you go online to our new website, you can see your property, and by the end of the year, you will have we should have the aerial photography completed so that you can view your property online almost exactly as it would be on the ground. And one of the things I like to say, and that is, there are some things that you just cannot change in the office. And by not understanding that, it gives you a colored picture because it is not fair to say something. I cannot say some things about my office because it's confidential. Sometimes I'll put my staff at risk if I mention those things because of the way we have to work. So by not working in the office, you don't understand. So on March 3rd, folk more experienced, the most qualified, and the best candidate. Mike Bennett, and your question. Having served as a county commissioner for several terms, is your underlying inner drive for seeking election as chairman of the commission? What is your underlying inner drive for seeking election as chairman of the commission? Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Macon County has been good to me. And I want to continue to be good for Macon County. And I feel like uh, if I run for chairman of the county commission, I can help the citizens of this county to go in a step further than we're going today. And I feel like my experience throughout the many years in county government, law enforcement, uh, the uh, experience I have in the county commission's office, that it gives me the ability to work with other agencies throughout the county to move this county a little further. I have a great working relationship with all the cities in the county, and uh, I just think we need to create a county of governments and uh, have all cities and counties sit down at the table and let's uh, come up and create uh, something we can all share. You know, the city just announced tonight they had uh, going to buy a new trash truck. We have to contract our trash out. Maybe we could work out a deal with the city to help pick up the county trash, you know, and save us all some money. So we just need to all sit down together and see what we do with other agencies and, and uh, try to combine it all together and see if we can't save citizens in this county some money. Thank you. With your record of years of service as District 3 Commissioner, what are your plans to be, to plans to more actively involve the citizens of your district? And what plans do you have for improvements in the district? Uh, I guess it's kind of a two-pronged question to, to address the first part, talk about uh, involving citizens more. Uh, I'm sitting here reading the question and studying on that. Uh, maybe we need to take the approach that, that many do with like neighborhood watch. Um, maybe adopt that kind of philosophy with, with different neighborhoods or communities to have kind of a, a, a organization within certain areas uh, to kind of keep their 
uh, issues addressed. Um, we've kind of got a uh, situation that we've already kind of done this in the Tysonville area. They have some unique uh, issues there, and so they've kind of formed a, uh, a group together, and they've got a point person that I'm working with to try to address some of these issues because some of, some of them are not they're they're beyond the county level, so we're going to be working uh, as well with, with with state officials as well. So that's kind of how I guess maybe we need to adopt. Uh, the same philosophy for, for other areas throughout the district and throughout the county that because every community has different issues so if, if you've kind of got a committee and a point person it kind of helps to keep those issues uh, uh, addressed and, and find solutions to, to fix these uh, issues like I said because each, each area may or may not have the same issues like they do in Tysonville. Um, talking about plans for the district uh, some of the past plans we've had over the past uh, 10 years, and this is just road uh, paving projects and bridge projects, but District 3 has had over $12.5 million worth of uh, road projects and bridge projects in the last 10 years. Uh, collectively, the whole county's had over $30 million. So we've done a lot, there's a lot more to do. We've already got plans uh, you know, that we're working with or working on. Um, some of the roads that you want, may be more familiar with in, in the Tuskegee area, Howard Road, Kenner Road 18, uh, Kenner Road 67, 69, um, several in the Hardaway area that need to be addressed is Amber Road, Kenner Road 20, and many others. So anyway, just want to continue to work for the citizens. Thank you. What beneficial leadership experience and skills will you bring to the position of District 3 Commissioner, if elected. As you know, District 3 is West Macon County, and it's leading any other district in growth. So I would have to work closely with my commission, with my city council to show up, stay abreast on what they're doing, participate, participate if they ask me. But the main thing, my people, I will call town hall meetings to get your input so we can use your input to move the county forward. Wherever the business go and set up, it will provide for all Macon County citizens. If it's in District 3, District 2, or District 1, what we need is a tax-based improvement. So right now, the skills, my skills will be, I will be humble to my people and I will make them knowledgeable and I will work with all the government bodies that's in my district and in the, and in the county. Thank you. As a newcomer to the arena of political elected officials, what motives and drive experience will you bring to the position of district commissioner? Thank you, Dr. Arrington, for your for your question. Um, to answer the first part, motives. Uh, yeah. Um, running for Calvin Mitchell, Jan Canada, Frank Lee. I'm running for Miss Angelina, for Dr. Harrington, for the people of Miami. What, what, what more motivations could you want than the people of this county? As far as experience, during my time in the military, I was stationed in a place called Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. Who's heard of uh, Guantanamo Bay? So during that time as a young petty officer in the Navy, uh, a leadership role, I was assigned to be accountable for personally identifiable information, for uh, records, for pay, for auditing, for departmental things to, to make sure that the mission was accomplished. And it reminds me of a quote from a, a dear mentor of mine. Um, when, when I was a young teenager, 16 years old and struggling, he said, son, it's better to be trusted than to be loved. It's better to be trusted than to be loved. And those words guided me and have guided me my entire life. And so I'd rather be dependable than liked. I'd rather have integrity than anything else in my life. And so as far as experience, 
know, what do you want to hear? You want to hear about, you know, growing up homeless, right? Standing in lines at soup kitchens, because that was my experience. As far as experience, you want to hear about losing people to gang violence in this community, because I lost a brother to gang violence years ago at the age of 18. So when we talk about experience, I care deeply about this community because you all raised me, you all made me who I am. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're moving now into the last phase. If anyone has a question written on the index card, raise your hand quickly. Raise your hand quickly so she can collect it. Raise your hand quickly. Raise your hand if you have an index card or a question. All right, we have a question now to Mr. Iverson again. Having a law degree and teaching classes of business law and ethics, how has that added to your job as revenue commissioner? Yes, uh, having ethics and having a law degree it teaches, yeah. it teaches me that there are things that I must consider. There's a right answer and a, a more than right answer. And it all depends on your moral compass. And my moral compass always goes toward the most ethical answer that I can give. And I asked my uh, ethics students this morning, is it unethical for a professor to be the revenue commissioner? And they said, no. It's not unethical. It gets unethical when I start doing illegal things. In both sides of the equation, when I start asking for uh, money for grades or I start to give exemption to people who do not have exemption, then I have become unethical. But ethics is a great part of all of our lives and we must always consider the truth. When we start telling things that are not true, it harms our integrity, our character, and reputation. As a real estate professional, I have honored the confidentiality of a lot of people in this community. I have appraised a lot of houses in this community. And people have given their houses appraised for a lot of reasons. And I know why they get it, but no one else knows. So confidentiality and ethics go hand in hand. And I must say, ethics is a part of anyone's profession, not just being a law professor or a revenue commissioner. It goes to any profession in the world. All right, I have a question. I'm going to try and read it here. What are your plans for the youth and how they can connect or find someone some way to live, how they can connect or find housing, I guess this is somewhere to live. All candidates, what are your plans? Let's deal with the first part. What are your plans for the youth? Anybody want to speak? Okay. Uh, youth is a main part of our community. We need to uh, give them more to do. We, we uh, in District 4 right now, we have a baseball field, have several activities going on out there uh, all during the summer. We have several different youth organizations, YMCA Youth uh, comes out and plays. Dixie Youth in Macon County, they come out and play. Uh, we have uh, several activities going on there now, and we need to do that all over the county. And we also need to reach out to the schools and uh, offer any kind of programs they got and bring it out into the community and get the community behind them. You know, it's very sad when you go to a football game in, in a high school and uh, you got four or three players out on the field and you look up in the stand and you got six players. You know, that's the kind of representation we get for our students and we need to represent them when they go out and do that. This is to all of the candidates. The question dealing with how will you, what are your plans for the youth? And how can you connect uh, housing somewhere for them to live? Speak. 
Thank you. Um, I'm very interested. To, I don't know if that was your question or not, but what's your name? Anastasia. Okay. And you know, I, like I said, I don't have all the answers, but I'm very interested. So you you attend the the group home? Is that right with Miss Angelia? I'm very interested in what you think would be a good solution to that. I believe that we should have more activities so that we can connect. You know, like we were talking about gang life is a big thing. And I feel like if we're connecting more as a community, a lot of that stuff would really lessen down and we would make more connections with people. Thank you, excellent. And I, I guarantee you and I, I can promise you that I will fight for Macon County, I'll fight for District 3, and I'll fight to do everything possible to ensure that you feel safe. Because I, I know what that feels like to be after hours and not have anything to do. So thank you for your, for your answer. Thank you. All right, the next candidate would like to speak on the question, what are your plans for you, and how will you uh, connect for housing? Well, work, working with the youth, uh, I have tried to do an internship in my office, but we have to work out the logistics with the legal side. But I also am working with uh, Booker T. Washington. I have, uh, I'm a 12 year perfect attendance student. I went 12 years without missing one day out of high school. Or first grade high school. And I have instilled that in the Booker T. Washington students, and I'm trying to get that program started because. That's a, that's a feat. Once you get started with that, it's, it's an achievement, and it gives you pride that you have accomplished something. So I will continue to work with that. As far as housing, well, I'm with the um, Tuskegee Housing Authority, and we also have programs for the youth, and housing it will be for the families. Youth will not be renting homes. Next uh, candidate. Good morning, everyone. Talking about connecting plans for the youth and how you will connect. Well, what I would do, the mind is a terrible thing to waste. I would like to begin tutoring programs throughout the county, and I would like to work with the students on campus and forming them as instructors. And I think we could help our youth better by educate them so they can move on or stay here and become productive citizens. All right, come on. I'm going to make you clean the mask since I was first out. Right? What are your plans for the youth and how do you connect for housing? Speak. Well, one of the things that I do and I have done, like I said, I have two kids who have matriculated through the school system here, and I still help with BTWI, with the track team. I still participate with the youth here in the community, giving them someone to look up to, to let them know that uh, you still, you have people within the community who may not have kids there that still care about them. And hopefully that will roll over. As far as with the Revenue Commissioner, if I am, when I'm elected, I'm claiming this. When I'm elected, one of the things that I will do is, of course, start as well, try to get that mentorship moved along. I won't stop. I think it's a very good idea, and I can commend Mr. Gandy for that, because we have to get our kids involved, and hopefully, and one of the things that I am truly hoping is that they see me doing what I'm doing <coughs> and they step along in my footsteps because it's going to take the youth to move us forward but it's going to take us to truly encourage them and I think encouragement goes a long long way Why don't you stay in then you want to come up with another question? Oh, okay. Another question. Oh, okay. Then you won't have to be bouncing up and down. And I'll come back to you, Commissioner. Tracy Moon, how do you feel you are better qualified to be Revenue Commissioner 
when you have never been in this position? Oh, wow. That's a good question. I can surely say anybody who's ever elected has never been in the position. Correct? But there comes training. There comes love. You have to love what you do. You have to be committed to what you do in order to do it well. Now, as I said, what I'm bringing is integrity, what I'm bringing is honesty, but most of all, I'm bringing total commitment to this community. I've done it for over 20 years, and I'm not stopping now, and you can't make me. That's why I've put myself in this position, to put myself out there, to show you that I care. And as far as sacrifice, I think I'm the only candidate here who had to take a leave of absence from her job to do it. And if that's not commitment and dedication for you, I don't know what else is. But this is what I bring to you. Just as I'm committed here doing this now, I will be when I'm in that office. I will be there for you. You will not have to, I'll put it like this, anything you need will be taken care of within 24 to 48 hours if I'm not there out training. Because if I can go back after 20 years and get my master's degree with a 4.0, I don't think there's anything that I can't accomplish when it comes to the books. So I just ask you to give me that opportunity. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Thompson, let's go back to that other question about what are your plans for you and how they can connect for better houses. Speak. As far as my plans with youth, for, for many years, I've sponsored numerous uh, football teams, basketball teams. I have a, a great uh, group of guys and, and, and women that uh, coach in, in, the, in the, well, really all over Macon County, but a lot of their most of them live in this kind of short area. So I work with them closely. They came to me many years ago and said, you know, we would like to have home field advantage sometimes because I've been to, to other uh, areas in Washington play and I felt like we got a little home cooking and I didn't like it. So they came to me and said we would love to have a baseball field. We built a baseball field right there at Prairie Farms. It's a high school baseball regulation field and if I'm not mistaken it may be the only one in the county that is that is lighted uh, with those specifications. So that's how I've been personally done with you. Um, all right, those are the questions. I believe those are all the questions that we have from the audience that we will present. Finally, candidates, thank you for your cooperation. And we're now going to give you one minute. One minute for your closing statement. And I'll start here. You can just pass the mic on. One minute. I'm so glad to have this opportunity to voice what I believe is the truth. And I just want you all to be honest with yourselves that, yes, you do need to get some training, but there must be some type of experience you must have before you go into the office. You do not want a doctor who has never had any experience in surgery to operate on you. I do not want a teacher who has never taught a classroom and never did any student teaching to teach my children. But I just want you to be honest with yourselves and say that experience do count. Experience does matter. This is your most expensive property that you probably will own in your lifetime. And you want someone who has that experience and that honesty and integrity to do it right. I was just told that during December when people were standing in line that I came out and said, I'm sorry, I thank you all for your patience. They said, well, we'll, someone said, well, I'm the one that's late. I said, yeah, but we have to let you stand in line because of short of staff. Send them out. Okay. Thank you. Speak. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I would like again to thank each and every one of her coming out tonight and giving me the opportunity to talk to you. And I want to thank all the people from Macon County for giving me the opportunity to serve the many years that I have. And it's, it's been a great pleasure, and I want to keep on serving. 
And uh, on March the 3rd, it's real easy when you walk in that poll and you look under the county commission chairman, just pick the first name you see and you'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> I guess this, comes, this is where we come to a close. But this is about truth, it's about accountability, and it is about integrity. And I will say this, because the truth has already been spoken, and I don't think I'm going beyond to say this, but if you want to continue to pay your tax dollars for a full-time position to get part-time service, then, of course, then I should not even be standing here. But if you want someone who's totally committed to you, who will be there for you, who will get the training, and, and you know, I've worked in conjunction with the Revenue Office uh, for 17 years. So I am familiar with the office. I'm not going there just totally blind. I have a relationship with the staff. But if you want someone who will be totally committed to you and the growth of this county, then I ask you on March 3rd, select Tracy Moon to be your registered uh, commission. You won't go wrong because a vote for me is also a vote for you. Thank you. times ahead. And I want to go there with you. Because I have seen over the lake that Tuskegee is going to make it. And when we make it, it's going to be a better day for all of us. And I just want to work with people who make it happen. I want to work as your servant, as your slave. I want to work for you. And everybody that I promised that I would do something for, I'm going to plan on doing it, like talking to the Revenue Commissioner and talking to the city of Tuskegee. Cut your trees for me, then. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Cut your no, 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 Let me first say, it's, it's truly been a pleasure to, to serve the citizens of Macon County. Uh, is everything done? No. No. There's no point in just sugarcoating. There's a lot more to be done. But we've, we've done a lot with a little. we found a way to, to try to do the best to, to answer the concerns of the citizens. Trust me, when, when I say the commission hears you, we hear you. And, and it frustrates us a lot of times not to be able to address the issues as fast as we would like, but don't ever think that they go, uh, just get swept under the rug. We're constantly talking about issues, trying to find ways to make things happen, 
Um, we've got some more ideas. We just got to get some better. Uh, tweak a few things, make things a little better. But I want to continue to work as hard as I can to make this county as best it can possibly be. So on March 3rd, vote for Thompson. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings to a close our speak out. First of all, let's give our speak out our candidates a round of applause. A round of applause for the candidates. And thank you, audience, for your very, very uh, respectful and listening ears tonight. I, I, I don't know what I, when I've ever had one so well with, with such a well-disciplined audience, sometimes it gets rowdy. But tonight you have been very, very supportive, cooperative, and respectful. Mr. President, I now turn the meeting over to you for final dismissal. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Will all members of the NWCP branch please raise your hand? Please raise your hand. Thank you. All those who aren't, please raise your hand. <laughs> we'll put you on the spot. We have an application right here. So right. 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 I would like to say to Mr. Lee, our political action chairperson, to his committee, Ms. Ford, and also Dr. Harrington, who is our program director. I would like to say thank you for putting this together. It hurt my heart to see a small group of people here. When we talk about a county of approximately 18,000 people. It hurt my heart to know as we have gone around the county, it's been the same way. This is very important, whatever you do. Even though I am a transplant of 26 years, this is my home. And it hurt me when I see things not being done because of apathy have set in, because we do not demand better yes. from our officials. Mm. The only way we can do this, young man, is that you and other people become leaders. But not only that, become informed. Yes. Become informed and be knowledgeable of what you have and what you can work with. Yes. I had to learn it the hard way also. You can't do anything without money. Amen. You can pray on it. Amen. You can get on your knees. You can do everything in the world. But one thing you can do if you don't have the money. When, when, when you divide yourself, and that's what we do here, we do not unite and put it all in one pool. We talk about recreation. You can't have good recreation for youth unless you have it for adults. Adults is where the money is. Understand that. You bring something to people who have money. You don't have money. The parents have money. Everywhere I've been, they have a good regulation program for adults. Because the mama's going to bring the children with them and the dads. You got to understand you have knowledge here in Tuskegee that is not being tapped and not being used. I just want you to go back because you all are the people we're talking to who really care. Go back and tell the people in your district, get out and vote. Vote in record numbers so you have no reason to complain about what's being done. Amen. That's why we're here at the NAACP. We are a civil rights organization. We've been here forever and we need your help to go forth in everything that we do in this county. And on behalf of this association, and thank you, Ms. Austin, for your leadership when I came in. And I hope I can take it and bridge it even more. But I would like to have 200 members, but I would love to have 200 active members Amen. so we can stand tall and do things that need to be done. Again, thank you for everything. My name is Tanya Chestnut, and I've sat here and listened, and I'm almost ready to move to Tuskegee. Come on down. But I'm here because District School Board 5 
includes Macon County. And I believe that if you're going to represent counties, then you need to be involved in what's going on in the various counties. I am no stranger to education. I have been in education for 36 years, and I've served at every level. At the school level, I've served as a teacher, assistant principal, a principal. At the central office level, I've served as federal programs director, curriculum director. At the state level, I've served as a principal coach, where I went throughout the state, all in District 5, supporting administrators and principals in the various schools. I retired for about 32 days <laughs> and went to higher ed where I served as associate professor as well as dean of teacher education at Concordia College, Alabama. I'm here not as a politician because I'm not a politician. I'm a woman of God that's passionate about education and I believe that our children deserve better and they need a voice at the table. I'm asking you that on March 3rd, when you get up to go vote, there are two things I want you to do. Number one, vote no for Amendment 1. Because if you don't vote no, that means that you will no longer have a choice of who represents you. But then once you get up and you have that opportunity to pull the lever, choose Chestnut on March 3rd as your state school board district 5 representative. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you for all that we have heard tonight. We thank you for these dear candidates that have opened up themselves, Lord, to want to serve their community and serve the people. Father, we are thankful for you. We put a covering around them and ask you to lead, guide, and protect them. Father God, we ask that we as citizens of Macon County, Lord, stir us up to go vote and to have a voice as the Ms. Chestnut said, and may the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer, and let us all say, Amen. Amen, amen. amen and good night. Please get home.